guys and welcome to Crash Chorus. I'm Taylor Nguyen and today we're going to be talking about the one, the only, Kainaranka. <laughs> Also known as mud dragons, these segmented, limbless animals never actually grow to be more than one millimeter in length. Wait, 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 wait. Aren't those those fish that crawl around on land? No, Sam, that's the mud skipper. The animals we're talking about are actually found in the ocean. The Kainaranka can be found from a variety of depths from 8 to even 8,000 meters deep. They come in a lot of different habitats, ranging from sandy beaches to even hidden amongst algae. The Kainaranka also have two orders the Cyclorhagida and the Homalorhagida. Now, before we get too far into these creatures, let's go back to the very beginning. Over to Quan. Although not much is known about the reproductive process of the Kainaranka, here's what we do know. We do know that female and male Kainaranka look virtually identical externally. On the left you see the female dorsal side and on the right you see the male dorsal side. There's essentially no difference. Here, once again, you see the female on the left side and the male on the right this time with the ventral view, and just like before, there's almost no difference. Female Kainaranka can produce year-round, where the females can provide yolk and an egg case for their eggs. In addition, Kainaranka are protozoans, which means their mouths develop first during development. Now that we've got the reproductive system out of the way, we can start talking about everybody's favorite part, food. The Kainaranka can be found eating bacteria or any organic material on the bottom of the ocean, such as algae. Well, how do they get to this food? Funny that you ask that, because the Kainaranka actually don't eat the way you or I would. Kainaranka actually have these protrusions on their head, called head scallids, that look like this. And these scallids collect a bunch of algae for the Kainaranka to feed off of without it really having to do that much work for its food. Once the food for the Kainaranka is gathered all up around the head scallop, it's then sucked through the pharynx so that it can get directly to the Kainaranka's stomach. Well, if the Kainaranka don't have to move a lot to get their food, do they even move at all? Actually, they do still move a little bit, but despite living underwater, they actually don't move in the traditional way most marine animals do, like fish. They move by extending their head and using spines on the outside of their body to move the body forward to move through water or sediment. Oh, I think I get it now. These are animals that grow and develop by molting. The females usually have three to six eggs at a time, and the offspring are born with 11 segments instead of 13 like the adults. Is that right? Yeah, that's actually exactly right. However, their lifespan remains unknown. See, Kainaranka are really interesting, aren't they? Actually, fun fact about Kainaranka, Kainaranka are so small and so numerous that under a single footprint in the sand, there can be up to 100,000 individual Kainaranka. Really? That's crazy. Where do these guys even come from? Well, we can have Quan explain that to you. When it comes to discussing the evolution and history of the Kainaranka, it's important to use phylogenetic trees. The first one that I'll be talking about is the tree constructed from our data matrix. In addition to the standard characteristics that we use for the data matrix, we also compare the presence of eyes, dye, and habitat between each organism. The outgroup of this tree is the periphera, and the closest relative to the Kainarinka is the Annelida. In this tree, this one was constructed from the 16S DNA sequence data. Based off of this tree, the outgroup is the periphera, and the closest relative to the Kainarinka is the Mollusca. And lastly, we have a published phylogenetic tree that includes the Kainarinka taxon. The reason why this tree differs from the tree that we made that was generated from the 16S DNA sequence data is that the published tree used SSU rRNA sequence data sets, which stands for small subunit ribosomal RNA, and that they compared the Kainarinka to a wider variety of organisms. In the published tree, the closest relative to the Kainarinka is the Priapaluda, while, as I mentioned earlier, the Kainarinka's closest relative in the 16S DNA phylogenetic tree was the Mollusca. How long has this group even existed? Not much is known about their history because their habitat and size makes them extremely difficult to observe. Um, in addition to that, they're also found at the bottom of the ocean and they bury themselves into the sediment, which makes it hard for us to exactly know how long they've been around. Are there any traces of them existing in the past? Any fossil records? There's actually no fossil record of the Kainarinka, so there's no way to know for sure when they actually first appeared. 
Uh, they most likely evolved to fill up an ecological niche, originating to take up a spot in the marine food chain. Well, there you have it. The next time anyone brings up a kinorinka in your average, casual, everyday conversation, you'll know exactly what they're talking about. Thanks for watching. We'd like to thank our TA Cameron, Dr. Hertz, Tatiana, and the entire biology department.